Hey, welcome to show 95 of the Toe Business Podcast. I am Jeff. This is Brad. Brad, how's it going? Pretty good. You know, tying up loose ends here for the end of the year. You know, at the at the time of this recording, it's the middle of December, so we've got a couple weeks left in the year. Got Christmas coming soon, so my office looks like Santa's workshop. Um, can't have anything sent to my house because my nosy-ass kids will get into it. Um <laughs> Speaking of kids, you got some uh, some big news, don't you? I am a granddad. Yep, that's awesome. Yeah, the awesome. Uh, everything's going great. Did we mention that in the last show? Did it happen last? Yeah, time? we talked about babies and concrete a lot. Oh, that's right, that's right. <laughs> How can I forget? <laughs> but no, everything's going great and uh, going great for me. Going great for baby Owen, but uh, you know he's not, he's not letting <laughs> mom and mom and dad not so much. No, not much. No. They both look like they've been up for like three weeks straight at this point, and they kind of have. <laughs> oh man, yeah, but I remember that. It'll be, it'll be fun. I mean, you know, he's not going to know what's going on with Christmas, but just having him around will be good enough. Uh, but other than that, yeah, we're in the same boat. We, uh, oh, we got all of our customer gifts going out this week. Um, we 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 kept it bourbon themed again. So we got a uh, nice little uh, etched Southside Wrecker uh, bourbon glass set with uh, tongs and the little stainless steel balls that you keep in the freezer. And uh, with some local, we started, we're trying to start a tradition and uh, always keep it local. So last year we did uh, Old Fourth, uh, which is a distillery out of Atlanta. And now down in Americus, Georgia, way down in Americus, Georgia, where Jimmy Carter's from. Um, there, there's a, ah, oh, darn, what was it? Southern something. <laughs> Anyhow, there's another distillery. Down there. <laughs> and it, I don't know, uh, at the, um, at the auction, at the, the museum auction, what a month and a half ago now, um, there was a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of rum, a couple of rum gift sets. And, and that distillery is like, I would guess really close to the, the bourbon one. So I don't know what they got going on in America's Georgia down there, but it might just be so, uh, so remote and, and, and quiet and boring. All they got to do is drink rum and, and bourbon. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Rum's the new hot, uh, liquor right now. You know, bourbon has been, it blew up the yeah. past three, four or five years. Um, rum is, is coming on the scene now. There's a lot of craft rum distilleries. There's a lot of pop-up, a lot of, Traditional whiskey distilleries are adding rum to their lineup. Um, I see people go pick, um, you know, batches of rum like you could do with with whiskey in the past, and you know, put your label on it or whatever. So that that's definitely the hot thing right now. Some of it's very good too. I, I've always been a, a rum fan, and uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Peacock and his generous donation, uh, I, I walked away with the big gift set of uh, I believe it was five different bottles of. Uh, rum uh from the museum one of the one of the few things i bid on that i actually won <laughs> or i should say could afford to win <laughs> all right but uh yeah in the past i've been on some stuff thinking oh my god i hope i don't win this i, <laughs> I wanted it but i don't want to pay that tab right there's a few things i i was kind of happy they went uh it was funny uh me and bart at one point we realized we were on opposite sides of the room bidding against each other which was kind of no oh, man counterproductive so we the rest of the night, we set up camp next to each other so we know what each other was doing. And, uh, probably, probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they, uh, I think it was Zips donated two giant line art drawings of uh, of uh, one of a ten seventy five, one of a nine ninety fifty five XL, and we walked away with those. So those those decorate our big noon uh, noon and meeting room now. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, to I, I saw those. I wasn't there, but I saw those. Um, somebody else won something like that. Um, so I think it was Quinn. Quinn, um, yeah, he kept outbidding me on it. I kept marking it up. <laughs> he'd go over marking it, and then finally it got so high. I was like, okay, I gotta pick. I gotta pick and choose a little more smartly here. He uh, he walked away. It was a, a really cool like sketch of a blown apart winch. I think it was a random. Yeah, that's what it was. And it it was really cool. Uh, I would have, uh, I would have liked to take that one home, but I was happy with the line, 
the line drawings that Bart won. Uh, but other than that, um, we've got we've got a guest coming on today, and he is. Uh, I'd go ahead and say he is probably the most recognizable tower in the world right now. I don't know if that gives anything away. That's probably safe to say. Um, <laughs> you know, there's not many that probably would be recognizable, but he's got a certain uh, brand that he's built. So I think everybody would will recognize once we introduce him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you'll recognize him. And uh, he, uh, I believe he's got a bit of a story to tell. Uh, if, if you look through all his uh, posts and, kind of see what he's been up to and where he, where he came from and, and one really significant event recently. Uh, we're going to get into it all when we get back here. All right. As promised, we're back here with our guest this week. And uh, we, uh, we described him as uh, the most recognizable man in towing. I don't <laughs> think anybody would disagree with that. Uh, he's hard to miss. He's typically in really bright green, everything. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yes anyway and uh brian tow truck wags we are glad to have you on here we've been talking about this for a while and uh we appreciate you coming on all right thank you thanks for having me sure sure so uh really we, uh, i'll just start out where i became aware of you um one day i saw a tiktok video posted to facebook i don't have tiktok right so that was my first exposure to it and uh yeah it was, I, I forget what it was. It seemed like you were standing next to your truck in a gas station or something at a fuel pump or something and uh, going on. And whatever it was, it, it cracked me up. I was like, this, this is cool. I'm I'm a huge fan of people who can joke around about themselves and they don't take things too seriously and everything. And that yeah. definitely comes through really loud and clear from you, right? So, uh, right. I, and then, you know, I you see these like one-time videos pop up all the time and then you never see the person again hear from them anything like that right yeah but then it seemed like a few days later here's this guy he's popping up again i just saw this guy the other day and and he he pops up and there's another video and it wasn't too much longer another video and and i noticed i I think they were all tiktoks that you reposted to to facebook and yeah it was just cracking me up and next thing i know you're you're getting you're getting likes, you're getting comments and everything. And it just, it just looked like, I don't know, man, I think our industry kind of needs you. Right. Yeah. Everything's so high stress all the time. Everybody's taking things so seriously. And then here comes tow truck wags to kind of <laughs> knock everything back down to where it needs to be, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, could you tell us, I'm guessing, I'm guessing tow truck wags d- existed way before TikTok. Oh yeah, definitely. So what, um, what what got it started? Can you get us rolling on this? Well, uh, the pandemic happened. Uh, I was, I was uh, when I was a kid. My mom used to have me in the talent shows in schools, and it was always a Weird Al thing. I'd lip sync Weird Al songs. Uh, I always ended up winning those, which that was great. That's like the only thing I was good at back then. I was the I was the the geek in school. Got bullied all the time, but that was my one. My one moment to shine all year was the talent shows, but uh, so my mom kind of prepped me for it my whole life. But well, but then the pandemic happened, and I found myself sitting in the truck a lot because no one was out driving, uh, or I would be up at the car auctions in Indianapolis, and where you would sit for hours at times. So to just pass time, I was I'd make a little face funny Facebook videos and. Somebody told me that TikTok would be a great place to go for the style that I was using. I so I went on over to TikTok. I thought it was just a, a kid's app where they lip sync and dance, and I gave it a shot, and it took off. and And then one day, yeah, you know, I, I I got around twenty thousand followers, and I thought I was just I was the man. So what I was thinking <laughs> that that I was, uh, and then. I made a video where some girl said that you can't be towed if you twist your tires. So I made a response video to that kind of really sarcastic, like, Oh no, I'm going to lose my job. And had myself standing in the, in the soup line at the homeless kitchens. And, uh, and then that video is exploded. It's 
21 million hits right now. And that's where that's where it all really took off. Uh, I started getting recognized by people. And that was that was great. That's great for your self-esteem when you don't think a lot of yourself. It really helps. Uh, so I continued making my videos and people continued following me. And, uh, that now I'm at about half a million viewers right now or followers on TikTok and a quarter million on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> so I'm I moved they I moved over to Facebook because TikTok's weird. They'll they'll make somebody big real fast, but then they'll throw them away as quick as they made them. So you gotta be real careful. Uh, so I get nervous posting on TikTok because I don't want to lose everything I built over there, but they're, they changed their algorithm so much. Like right now they're into girls dancing and stuff like that. So, so my, my, my style of videos aren't getting a lot of play. So I went to Facebook and it absolutely exploded over on Facebook uh, way faster than TikTok did. Uh, so I just basically, I'm, I'll add new content on Facebook and in between my new content, I'll add, my old content to Facebook from TikTok. So it looks like I'm posting something new every single day, but I'm not really, but I just slowly moving it over there. And that keeps, keeps me in the feed and it keeps me relevant. It's really, there's a science behind it. There really is. So but, oh yeah. how long did it take you to figure out that science? Yeah, it, it took a little while. Uh, there's a, a few times I just was ready to just give it up and, uh, that I had a few other creators get a hold of me and, and they kind of told me, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that. And they, most of them are right. Yeah, a lot of them I, I see are gone now because social media stardom doesn't last very, it's a very short, short lived life for people. Uh, but somehow I've managed to hang on. It's been three years now, uh, which is a lifetime in the social media world. So I'm hope I'm hoping it'll lead to something bigger down the road uh, i know that the a and e channel has their eyeball on me uh there was a guy who who uh did one of their shows uh hustle and toe uh, i talked to him and he said that the the numbers i was getting on my videos were beating the numbers that a and e was getting for that show at that time so yeah. i was like wow wow so, and that would be great but it's it's about connecting with the people and because it's hard to make people like a tow truck driver. We have such a bad stigma. Sure. People autom they automatically think repo or somebody is out to get you or get in your wallet. But I try to show the opposite side, the human side, humanize the tow truck driver. I, I'm doing pretty decent at it, I think. I got a lot of people that follow me that never dreamed they would follow a tow truck driver. So so that that's a really good feeling. Well, and Jeff mentioned it that you're probably the most important figure in towing right now because you do bridge that gap. You know, all of us from inside the industry understand what you do every day, and um, we know the the good side of what towing is and what operators do. But like you said, the ordinary people off the street that have no connection to towing, when you can bridge that gap and, and give them a peek behind the curtain of what you actually do and how. This industry actually does help people, and it is a professional industry. It's not all you know. We do yeah. have our bad actors, but we have a lot more good actors than we do bad. Um, so that, I mean, that's huge for this industry. We've talked. You know, we've been doing this almost three years, and we've talked many times on how we change the perception of the towing industry, you know, to the um, outside public. And you're doing a very important job of doing that. Right. Uh I, I'm trying my best. I, re, I really appreciate the positive feedback I get. Uh, uh, with, I, with with that said, I I mean, have you have you had to deal with any of the so-called trolls? Have oh yeah, anything negative. Oh yeah, they they're everywhere all the time. I've used to. I I thrived on the negative. Uh, in Facebook, I used to have a page that was dedicated to putting on blast people who cheated on 
you know, if you got cheated on, you post that person's picture and name. And uh, I thrived on that for so long. Yeah. But my life was just horrible at the time as negative. I surrounded myself with all that negative energy and I wasn't really happy. Uh, so now I'm taking the happy try. I, I believe in karma a hundred percent. You get, you get out of life what you put in. So I'm trying to put smiles out there now. You, you, uh, feel, but the tur- you feel the difference <laughs> you're making now from going from that end to where you're yeah. at? Yeah. Yeah. The trolls followed me though, but I've, I've learned just like they say, don't feed the trolls. Cause right. if you respond to them, you're playing right into their game, their hand. And that, and that that's good advice. Even outside yeah. your page. I mean, with all the reviews towers get mm-hmm. online and everything, how you, how you react to them is a lot more important than what they say about you. Yeah. 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 Like I see, I'll see on Google reviews. There's some guy I'll get on there and bash a company and it's, a lot of it depends how the company responds. I'll see some people get on there and they'll argue back and forth with that guy. And it just makes that company look horrible. Does. Yeah. We had that just this week. Um, somebody took to Facebook, Google, every outlet they could find bashing us saying uh, we were charging too much. Basically what happened, this person had a police impound, got their car impounded by the police department and they looked up the, I'm in Ohio. So the Ohio state towing statutes that only apply to PPI and they, they can only legally charge this and they charge this. So it took a lot not to argue. I got on replied, just stating the facts of the state code. Like, and I even apologize, say, Hey, sorry, you know, you had an unfortunate situation. Um, feel bad, but here's the situation and here's how it applies to the law. And they didn't want to hear it. They just kept going back and it was so hard not to argue and be like, listen, you're stupid. Like you're wrong. Like, but I, you can't, like you said, you can't do that. Cause at the end of the day, the, the one that looks bad is the company. Oh yeah. yeah. But trolls are fun for a little while. <laughs> so but, yeah. And that's a little bit, you know, behind the curtain of the, the social media side of you and where you're at currently. But why don't you give us <coughs> a little history, how you got into the industry and what, what drew you to towing and what you like, you know, why you've stayed in it and that kind of thing. Well, uh, I, when I got into towing, it, it was actually kind of, I was trying, I just got, I was in the first stages of getting out of addiction and I'm trying to build my, trying to put good in the world so I can rebuild my character and, and right all the wrongs I've done. So I was picking up food at a food pantry and I was delivering it to people around town. I post on Facebook, if anyone needs food, I'll help you out. So I had a minivan. I was doing food deliveries, you know, just trying to balance the good and bad in my life. And I got a flat tire and I knew a guy who drove a tow truck. Uh, I I didn't talk to him a whole lot, but I knew who he was and we were cool. And he came to help me out and he gave me a, a tow and I got to ride with him. I didn't know you could ride with a tow truck driver at that time. So I was all excited. And I, I watched how he did it and I was just amazed by the geometry and, and all that. And I didn't know how he was ever going to get it in my driveway. And it's like, man, if you want to just drop it up at the top of the hill, I'll put it in neutral and I'll roll it down and coast into the driveway. But, he proved me wrong and got it in the driveway. Yeah. He let me ride with him a couple times after that. And then I saw that they were hiring. So I got a hold of the boss. He let me ride with him. And I was already sold on towing. I was like, this is great. It, and then then we got a police call when I was riding with him. And that was it. That sealed the deal. It's like, oh my gosh. Cause I just I was I had just finished uh, going to a police academy, trying I was trying to become a police officer which I was already over the age. So I would have had to been a reserve, which didn't get paid. So, so my choice at that moment was I could either be a reserve cop or, and not get paid, or I can you know drive a tow truck and still get to help the public and do a lot of the cool stuff. So the boss let me ride with him and uh, I was sold on it. And he, uh, he liked how I was doing it. He trained me a little bit and, and that was it. Set me loose in a truck. 
at at what think, age, what what age did this occur at? Well, that, most people think I've been in the industry for years or or decades or whatever. It's not been that long. I'm just going on my sixth year right now. Huh. So, see, that surprises a lot of people. Uh, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not a old school veteran. I'm I'm still pretty new. I'm still learning every day, and I will until the day I I'm dead. You know, once you start stop learning, it's so then you need to just quit. So one one of the things that comes up a lot is we like insurance restricting who we can hire now by age and all that stuff. You know, we feel like we're missing the boat with a lot of possibly great tow truck operators because by 25 when you can finally hire them most of them found something else that doesn't yeah. require being out in the middle of the night out in the rain all that stuff so we feel like we're so i'm looking at you and i'm saying hell we, we still got hope we, we yeah can people over 25 into the industry and and love it just like we do um yeah did you did you start out in a carrier driving on a flatbed yep yeah yeah he had three flatbeds, you know, you know, we had a, you know, two, two, you know, Ford six F six fifties. And then a, a, a F five fifty. that was a four wheel drive. That's the one that you trained me in. But I saw this one rollback that nobody liked. No one would drive it. It was, it was dirty, uh, covered in dust. And, you know, the bed and chains were all rusted because it'd been sitting and he let me choose my truck. I chose that old dirty rusty truck because, I love the underdog. So, uh, and I ended up in that truck. It, something was wrong to where it wouldn't go over like 50 miles an hour. So, uh, yeah, so that was, that was the lowest earning truck in the fleet. But so I chose that truck and I eventually ended up making that the highest earning truck of all of them. Uh, just cause I stayed on it. I didn't mind doing the toes. These other guys, they'll get toes and they'll, Oh man, they'll, <laughs> they'll throw a, a tantrum or whatever. They'll complain about their paycheck at the end of the week, though. But, but now I've I've never turned down the toe, or I might get grumpy if it's real late at night or early in the morning. But I'll do it. I'm not afraid of the work. The uh, so all your time's been in a carrier. Uh, yeah. what, what type of work did you start out doing? Was it just kind of mixed between commercial and PD, or? Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, a lot of auction work, you know, we uh, have a contract with a junkyard and he buys, you know, 20 cars a week at the auction. So we're back and forth constantly up, up to the auctions and, uh, and then, you know, personal private toes and, and then police work. That's, that's what we do. And occasionally he'll put me in the little snatch truck. That That's fun. I like that truck. Uh, but I've ran a wrecker a few times. I, I'm not a big fan of the records just because I'm I'm a rollback guy. Yeah. But, but, you know, yeah. everybody has their preference. But everybody's quick to talk about auctions and motor clubs and all kinds of different work. Um, but Jeff and I are big proponents on, you know, whatever works for your business, do it. Um, but the auctions especially are a great place for new operators to learn. Mm-hmm. there's you're not backing up to an easy car that's already in neutral easy to get to you i mean you're getting stuff that's hammered in the front and it's front wheel drive you know or, or rear wheel drive whatever so you're having mm-hmm. to i mean you learn quickly on how to how to get stuff turned around how to tow stuff that normally you couldn't where to yep. where to hook stuff because it's you know some of it's missing parts or it's smashed up or whatever so i think that's a great mm-hmm. place to learn it is. That's the. There's no better way to learn than the auction. You we, learn where you can and you, can't hook to. Yeah, I mean, you're dealing with obviously a lot of wrecks, wrecked vehicles, but you're not dealing with the pressure of being on the side of the interstate or being, you know, in a busy intersection on a police tow. So you have time to kind of figure mm-hmm. stuff out and do it safely and learn the right way to do things. Yep. Yeah, we we were actually discussing at one point. We never moved forward with it, like. 90% of our ideas we, we never move forward with, but we were, we were discussing the possibility of starting a, a, a small separate company just to do auction work. And then we'd use that to train our operators. And then we'd, we'd advance them out of that in, into the other stuff. 
mainly because, all right, we're dealing with a lot of PD stuff. You don't want them to learn how to load wrecked cars out in the middle of the intersection with the cops sitting there, but man, you can get a lot of exposure at the auctions. So yeah, yeah, there's, there's definitely a benefit to doing that auction work right there. And we got, we got plenty of them around here. So, yep. so I, I noticed that there's actually, uh, you, you're actually putting in like, uh, production work on some of these videos. Now I saw one where, uh, you were, uh, it was like a news program and it was a side by side. You were at a gas station and <laughs> the reporter was. <laughs> the, yep. That was great, man. That was funny. Uh, where have you just taught yourself as you went along with stuff like that? The technical side of this while, while you tried to figure out social media and the videos and everything, how, how'd you evolve to that point? Yeah. The yeah, idea yeah. that, yeah. I used to do little video edits on a computer at home just for fun. And uh, once I once I switched to a cell phone, I was totally lost and I gave up all hope on doing video work ever again. And, but they've made the apps now so easy uh, that it almost does all the work for you. And it's hard. It's tricky to figure out at first, but once you figure it out, it's, it's, it's amazing. The, there's no limit to what you can do. Yeah. I've, I've played with that stuff really all my life. I, I was fortunate to grow up in a house where my dad worked for IBM for 30 years. So we were the first people on the block with a PC. And I've always just been, uh, just fascinated by, by editing video, audio, everything, which is kind of how we ended up here doing this show. Um, yeah, but, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. The, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, those TikTok videos are not easy to do all that stuff. I've made some just not to, anything to do with towing and to do the, all the different features and to cut and put everything in a certain way like that, that's got to be time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of, it's all about timing. It, it's, it's really fun though. I enjoy it a lot. So are you, are you still working for that company or are you out on your own now? No, I'm, I've always been with the same company. I've never switched. But, uh, I mean, my goal, you know, just like every opera driver, you know, one day, they'd like to have their own truck. There's, there's no retirement for a tow guy who drives for somebody else. So. Well, you're, you're breaking the mold at every turn, man. (laughs) (laughs) In company for six years and everything else. Yeah. Wow. That's fantastic, man. So the fire. Mm, fire. Yeah. Can, Can you run us through that? Because like it wasn't a tow truck for me, but I lived through a, a, a burn to the ground truck fire of my own. And I mean, it's easy to look from the outside and say, eh, it's a truck, it burned to the ground. You go buy another truck, but it, that's not the case, is it? No, no, I, yeah, it was a long tow is for me, you know, we usually do short toes, but that was a 200 mile tow uh, with, with an elderly couple. I had just dropped them and their car off. Uh, I made it three miles out of their house and then the, uh, the rollback died and uh, I heard a hissing noise. So I grabbed my phone and I hit record. So I was going to send it to my boss and my wife to explain why I wasn't going to be home that night for hours. Cause I knew, I knew it was going to be a long night. I figured I'd just broke down, but I heard a hissing noise and, and then it got louder. I jumped out and uh, you know, in my gauges, they were all fine. No, no signs of trouble. Nothing. Truck was running great jumped out and I saw the flame under the hood. I was like, Oh my God. I jumped it back in the truck to grab the extinguisher. Uh, I, I did a little quick sweep because I saw a fire on the road. So I wanted to start at the bottom and work my way up and it, it wasn't touching that fire on the road. Uh, so I didn't waste much time. I threw the extinguisher down, jumped in, grabbed a little man purse that I carry that, you know, has all my daily essentials, medicine, uh, contact solutions, stuff like that. I grabbed that and I grabbed a monster drink out of my cooler because I knew I was going to be <laughs> on this. I was in the middle of the country. Yeah. Uh, so I jumped out and by the time I got out, it was already too late. There was no saving. It was engulfed. It was, I think it was, I don't I used to know the number. It was like, you know, a minute, and nine seconds, something like that. And the entire truck was engulfed. All I could do is just sit there and watch and 
And as I'm watching, I'm thinking of every small, tiny thing that's in that truck. Yeah. Every little thing. Yeah. It's for days you think about that, you remember the stuff that you had in there. Yeah. It's it's it sucks. It sucks. It's being totally helpless. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you have cell service at all? At least? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was able to I don't remember if I called my boss first or or the police, but uh, I, I imagine probably the police. Yeah, yeah. I called nine one one and then called my boss because he was on the phone with me when the police pulled up. Uh, the police and fire they had a great response time. It didn't take them long at all, and I was in the middle of absolutely nowhere in Fort Wayne. Uh, but you know there was no saving it at all. So so you you just thought it was a typical breakdown and heard a weird hissing and yeah yeah we still we still don't know what happened we we were thinking maybe thinking maybe their the gas station had you know gas mixed in with diesel that might have done it you know maybe it I drove 200 miles with the gasoline floating on the diesel and it finally hit the gas but you know the state police went and checked the fuel tanks at the gas station that that wasn't the case that was fine that we never did figure out what what happened you know i could see barrier. first flame yeah I mean, the first flame i could see in the video was right beside the fuel filter so whatever is right beside the fuel filter i'm guessing is where it started i don't know i don't know diesel engines very well uh-huh. hmm. now i know shortly after that um you know there was a campaign to raise some money to you know help you know, refurnish the supplies and everything that you lost in that. Did you, were you able to get, you know, your equipment in your new truck, you know, that situation settled and in good, in good shape? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, my first step was to say, Hey, to my boss, you know, is the insurance going to take care of this? And uh, insurance would not cover any of my personal private property. Unless I had a receipt for it, which I mean, who keeps receipts anymore? Yeah. So, uh, so you know, people on Facebook were really awesome, and uh, they sent money through PayPal, and I was able to, you know, replace pretty much everything that I'd lost. Uh, amazingly, I, when I went back to get the truck from the Fort Wayne impound, so we could pull it, take it back here to Martinsville. Uh, I had my tool bag was under my back seat that had my, my Milwaukee impact. That was my, my prize tool. You know, I had it a while. It's the only first tool for towing that I'd bought with my paycheck. Uh, and somehow it had survived the fire. The bag was burned up uh, and all shrunk around it from the heat. But once I got the bag open, I was able to pull the drill out and it still had a charge and still worked. Uh, so that was really awesome. But, but everything else I was able to slowly build back. How, how good, um, how good did that feel? You know, Hey, I'm a guy making yeah. TikTok videos and, and, and I had a problem and my truck burnt and all these people are reaching out to help. Yeah. That yeah. Happened. That was, it was amazing. It's, you know, it's, it shows what a brotherhood towing really can be between, you know, operators who've never even met each other. Uh, it's amazing. How, uh, how long, I got to ask this because of the whole supply chain issue. How long did it take to replace that truck? Has it been replaced? Oh, oh man. It, we event, we were, we've been waiting over a year on a new truck and it's still not close to even being here. Yeah. Uh, so my boss, he found one, a truck, a used truck, just like the one I had in Washington. And he went and bought it. And brought it back. It had it has a, a a bad bed on it. The bed's not the best shape. <coughs> Excuse me. But we're uh, we're gonna take the bed off my old rollback and put it on this one because the fire didn't go beyond the cab. Okay. It stayed right at the cab. It was it's really odd, but yeah, the bed's still great in great shape from the winch, and so we're just putting my old bed on the new cab and it's going to be exactly like the old truck. That's I'm happy about that. 
Do you uh do you have a shop nearby that can get that done for you? Uh, oh yeah. Doing it yeah. Shop? Yeah, we're doing it ourselves. Uh, so that's a uh that, that could be fun. We uh we finally after years of talking about it, we finally built our first rollback in our shop. Uh I guess yeah. almost a year ago and it's it's a lot of fun and it's just it's just a cooler truck when you get done kind of create yeah. yourself, you know. Yeah, that's that's what I'm excited about this one. It, I feel like it's going to be really even more sentimental because, you know, we've kind of had our own hands in, in making it and just buy a truck and go. So I'm excited about it. It's supposed to be done this week. It's supposed to go in Monday to get a wrap put on it. So the whole, so instead of a white truck, it's going to be lime green with purple flames on it. So, <laughs> that so, seems fitting. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't uh, know where you came up with that color scheme. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm real real excited about that. Cool. So hey, uh, how'd you end up in Baltimore? Oh, oh, well, sorry. My uh, boss asked me if I wanted to go to a tow show. It's like, well, heck yeah, that'd be fun because he he goes to it all the time. Uh, he offered it to me this time, so. I was like, yes, definitely. So he paid for my way to get there, paid for all the gas and all that. And it was it was a great time. I really enjoyed that. So your first time going to Baltimore? Yeah, yeah. That was Baltimore scary. The tow show was great, but Baltimore's <laughs> scary. I think everybody shares that yeah. opinion. Yeah. yeah, I got got warned about the squeegee boys. Don't Yep. Once they kind of come up to your window, that squeegee, just go. <laughs> I heard it. You need to find your way to Florida. That's a little more laid back and a little more uh, easy going. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I plan on going to the Florida Tow Show this year. I've already requested my vacation be that week, so I'm well, excited. I'm assuming you got a, a high-vis Speedo for the, the warm <laughs> weather in Florida, the pool? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wore it in my little calendar shoot I did. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be the next topic here since you led into it. Yeah. Well, well, once you, for any, I'm sure everybody that's watching this or listening to this already has seen um, the posts in the calendar. Why don't you give a little, little insight on what you did, why you did it, and how it's going? Well, uh, I just wanted to make a funny Facebook post, uh, so I hired a photographer to. I tried to take pictures myself, but it. I wasn't very good at it. So I was like, Hey, let's do like a, a boudoir shot or boudoir photo shoot. Uh, but it'll be the tow truck version. And so you're like, okay. A lot of people are like, I don't know. But yes, yeah, so we went to the, the tow yard here and just had at it. And my wife, she was, she was dying. She, <laughs> she thought it was hilarious. So I made the Facebook post. And uh, with all the pictures, uh, and it got up to like fifteen thousand likes in no time, and that's you know I've never had anything like that. I may mean, may have got a thousand likes before on a post, but fifteen thousand blew me away. Most of the con every other comment on there of the thousands of comments was we're going to need a calendar of these pictures. So I was like, well, maybe let's look into that. Calendars are freaking expensive to make. I went everywhere looking and they went like 20 bucks at least to make a calendar. Uh, but I found a print shop in Indianapolis who uh, was able to take a chance on me and they believed it, it would take off. So they got, they cut the price, you know, super low uh, and mass produced it for me. And we're, it's, we're, I'm having trouble keeping up, you know, getting them out. So many people have ordered them. It's on uh, uh, three different continents, four countries. <laughs> it's it's amazing. I saw yeah, we're it. always we're always blown away when we look at the listener data from this show. Pe other countries, other you know, whole different mm -hmm. languages and whatever. And yeah, it, it's pretty cool that it's a good feeling that you put something out there that people actually care to spend their time watching or listening to. Yeah, it's yes. It's a weird feeling once you see the stats, logistics. How, how many how many states do you have covered? 
Uh, I've, I've only like I think three states now, and I've had hit all fifty states. You got one in Georgia. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. I think it's like North 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 Dakota, uh, Hawaii. Those those are two of them. I don't remember the other one. That... Ken, Kenny Tom and Cindy Itis. Here's your big chance. One of you uh-huh. first uh, Hawaii residents with a tow truck wagon. <laughs> calendar so hop right on that uh yes i think north dakota that might be a hard sell that would be a hard one to get because no, they're busy yeah. it's snowing up there. Like they're busy right now there so <laughs> i don't know but mm. uh, uh that's that's pretty cool so i mean has that has that exceeded your, your oh yeah expectations as far as how many are going out and all that yeah yeah i started out i had the print shop make 50 i thought i might sell 50 calendars and I'd be done, but no, that 50 was done. As soon as I made the post that I had calendars available within the first hour, those 50 were gone. I was like, Oh my gosh. So I got a hold of print shop and that's I'm like, Hey guys, <laughs> I, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to need a lot more. So you know, every day off I'm back, back at there picking up a couple hundred. Uh, really? Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Uh, man, it's, thing it's it, a lot of work. Oh Yeah. Yeah, it's like a full time job. A company's uh, been around like over forty years, and we have trouble giving away fifty calendars. Every year. <laughs> yeah, know? it's it's well, it's because you ha- you're not in a neon green speedo with your shirt off and American flag and crawling out of a truck. <laughs> yep, yep. So, like, did uh, when you were doing those photos, was someone kind of egging you on and provoking you to? Oh yeah, my wife was back there with the photographer. You know coaching me basically is she having fun with all this too oh yeah yeah she's in she's really enjoying it she's seen me from my worst to where i am now so oh, she's she's loving it oh wow <laughs> how does what about your boss how does he feel about you know as much how public you are and how you he's, know all the content you put out there he's really hard to read he's he's a <laughs> quiet guy he's quiet you know like i am believe it or not i'm actually real quiet and shy you know, if I'm in person, people think I don't, I'm mad at him or something because I don't talk. I just, I'm just quiet, but he's a lot like me. He's really quiet and hard to read. So for like the first year, I couldn't tell if he approved or, or didn't like the fact that I was doing videos, but you re- more recently, I'm starting to see him smile a lot more. Uh, so, so he, he likes it. He, lo- he loves the publicity. Yeah. You know, his, we're just a small company, you know, couple trucks and a couple drivers in a small town of like 11,000 people. So he's excited that, you know, the name Stanley Towing is being seen all around the world. So, so he's, he's really cool with everything. Yeah. I mean, I've yet to see a video that you've done where as an owner, I would feel like, you know, you put the company in a bad spot or, you know, a a negative light. So I, I, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't think he would mind at all. Yeah, I'm very, very particular about what's in the background of videos and or what I'm doing and trying to make sure that I'm not making us look bad in any way or giving any of the trolls a reason to or the tow police to have a fit. The tow police, yeah, they're <laughs> they're everywhere. Yeah. So so around here there was a, a guy, just one one tower in a in a rollback and and uh he, he was a bit of a character, man. He'd, he'd keep people laughing when he walked into a shop and I, I knew several shops. They, they used him more for his entertainment value and personality and all that. They, I mean, the guy would walk in the door and you knew all of a sudden you were going to be cutting up and laughing and all this stuff. And, and they loved it. Do you, do you feel like any of that's going on with you? Like, I mean, there's gotta be a people you tow into regular and tow for that. It just, here comes wags. Here it comes. Oh Yeah gotta be good right yeah yeah uh, a lot of people actually get almost disappointed because i'm i'm quiet in person i'm totally different person behind a camera uh, i get real i'm real shy and i don't talk a lot that's that's from year i had bad teeth for so many years that you know i walk talk like this all the time or uh, so i just learned not to talk and, and i hide hide myself self-esteem issues but I'm, I'm coming out of that now and become 
and more active and energetic around people. So well, people have to understand too. I mean, you do have a job to do. You're still providing yeah. a service, you know, and yeah. you have to earn a paycheck. You're not just out running around making videos all day. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they're very good about that. I'm, gl I'm glad. So do you, I mean, just like in life, you, you mentioned that you had some dental work done, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I've got a great employee that kind of went through the same thing. My, my question is, do you attribute like moving forward, being able to improve your daily life, stuff like that? Do you attribute that to towing? Do you think you'd have that success if you had gone another direction? I don't, I don't think so. I think towing was where I was meant to, to go. And it's, I think I'd probably still be, you know, stuck where I was if I'd went anywhere else. But in any job I go, I've gone to, I, you know, I'll, learn as much as I possibly can and try and do the best I can. And I don't ever, I never call in ever, no matter how sick I am. It's, it's hard to get me not to work. So, so I've always been reliable, reliable. Before so, the tow truck, were you, were you minivan wags or? Yeah. Wags or, I, is yeah. <laughs> I was, I was more, I was like the handyman in town. Just, you know, you'll see. Yeah. Uh, just every town has them, the guys who, you know, I went years without a driver's license because, you know, bad past. But so I was, I was the guy that walked town to town, uh, sleeping on people's couches, doing handyman work for, for cigarette money. So what's, I, what's that conversation like when you roll up, help a stranded motorist, and they hop up in the bed of the truck and they see the, the painted beard and you know the high vis everything what's that like you got to explain you know the whole image and and what you're doing to them yeah it used to i'd have to go through the big speech of well i do it for this reason and i do social media videos but but now i actually carry my that tow times magazine did an article on me so i carry it in the truck and i have it sitting on the dash so right when they get in, they I, if they ask a question, I can just hand take that off the dash and hand it to them. And say, this kind of explains everything. Legit, check so, this out. I was in a magazine. Yeah. So, How but, often do you have to to paint the beard? Uh, it's about once a week. It's 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 not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> I can reason. imagine. But, yeah, but but it's it's not it don't it's not too awful too awful bad it don't take long maybe 20 minutes out of the week not bad not bad the uh and keeping all that bright green clean has got to be a pain in the ass oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so hey um uh, we, we we're gonna see you in florida this year this spring oh yeah oh yeah definitely all right well you want to uh brad you got any more questions for him i don't think so yeah this has been pretty cool uh, do you want to, you want to let people know, uh, where to find you and your latest videos and all that good stuff? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm tow truck wags. It's one word. I'm on just about every platform there is now, uh, you know, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, uh, I even got a cameo, uh, Patreon. That's where I post the stuff that I can't put on my regular pages oh, no. uh, without getting in trouble. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's just tow truck wags on everything, just about. And and what what did you say you're up to for subscribers and all that good stuff? Uh, it's it's a, a half a million on TikTok and a quarter million on Facebook. Holy cow! It's amazing. That's crazy. That is awesome, man. Is, is there any any kind of message or cause you want to get out there? And I mean, uh, see the. I'm, I'm, uh, flag behind Dude. you there yeah just like every tow truck operator i'm i'm fighting you know for you know stricter enforcement at least of this slow down move over laws i think the enforcement's the key but because it doesn't seem to get enforced as much as it should uh, in indiana we're not allowed blue light privileges i'm i'm trying to work on getting that change because you know i have a little triangle that flashes a blue light and i notice when i set it on the ground you know, cars will move over a whole lot faster. Wow. Uh, I'm 
I'm working on trying to get awareness out there. It's just getting people to listen. I I can't think of anyone better to do that with your exposure and and everything you've got going on here. And and I mean, you 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 mentioned it. I hadn't thought about it until you mentioned it earlier. You you've got a pretty long run in lifespan right now. In in yeah. terms of social media. Well, yeah, you're it's... the only interesting person in this industry. <laughs> <laughs> there is a guy. There is a guy. He's from Cincinnati. Uh, his name was Tow Truck Dude. Uh, I don't know if you guys know him or not, but he was on TikTok. You know, he has he has half a million followers too. Uh, he's who caught my eye when I first joined TikTok, and I'm actually pretty good friends with the guy. That he don't really make videos anymore. It's, it gets overwhelming. Yeah. But, do you, do you, I can imagine like, I mean, us just coming up with content for the show, coming up with mm-hmm. Facebook posts, like it, it's a lot because I mean, you still have a life. You still got, you know, mm-hmm. wife, family, job, you know, yeah. other, other interests. So I hats off to you. I, I, I don't, I doubt people understand the amount of work that you put into this type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's three or four full-time jobs. <laughs> well awesome man uh look forward to meeting you in person in, in florida and uh hope you have a, a great christmas coming up here oh yeah definitely and uh we'll have to plan something for florida maybe we'll we'll meet up maybe do something together um we've got some some good connections down there with the powers that be so maybe we can we can do something entertaining yeah yeah i'm i'm always down for fun Oh man. Well, thank you very much for coming on here. It was fun. Uh, right on. fun. If, I, I almost feel stupid saying check out tow truck wags on social media because they've probably all beat me to saying that. So. <laughs> it sounds yeah. like it because, uh, what a, what a following that is. That is amazing. So, so good luck and thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate it. Hope you finish. All up. Right. right on. Well, have a good one. All right, man. Take it easy. Thank you. Hey, that is going to be the final episode for this year. Uh, my gosh, man, we start right in the beginning of what, 2019? We're finishing up 2022. We're already making plans for the first season of 2023. Uh, it's a lot of work, so please show suggestions. Any topic you want to hear about, uh, please send them in. We want to thank everybody who's for whatever reason, still listening to us on a uh, bi-weekly basis. We appreciate it. Uh, and uh, Brad, how about our sponsors? Yeah. I mean, this show is not free to do, you know, it takes time it takes money. It takes resources. There's a lot of equipment and technology involved to produce a good show. Um, you know, we both have a pet peeve about listening to the shows where the audio quality is bad and the equipment's bad. The technology is no good and you can't really, just the, the sound quality is not good. So we put a lot of time and money into that stuff. Um, and that takes money. So we appreciate our, our show partners, um, track zero, you know, obviously they're doing huge things in the industry right now. Um, they've got a, a few more things coming down the line soon. So we look forward to that. We appreciate their support. Um, Miller, obviously you don't have to listen to many shows to understand both of us are, huge Miller proponents. We, we enjoy our Miller equipment. Um, we appreciate them being involved. They've opened some doors for us and, um, given us some great resources to, to make some shows, um, auto data direct. Um, they've been with us for a while now and, you know, they keep adding to their suite of services and keep, you know, making themselves more useful to everyone in the industry. So, you know, we appreciate them supporting us. Um, we buy key fobs is back this year. Um, I'm a huge, we buy key fobs proponent. Um, you know, I, I send several shipments a year to them. You know, we're talking thousands of dollars we get back from them. It's not like we get 50 bucks and it makes, I mean, it's, it's free money. Um, so obviously we appreciate them. Um, check them out. If you haven't heard from them or heard about them, um, Sierra Pacific insurance, JC, um, you'll hear hear him again on the on the show soon. We've got some great questions to ask him, but he's obviously an open book and very uh, very willing to talk insurance. You know, especially tow truck insurance. 
So we appreciate him and his support. And we've had a lot of listeners I know reach out to him and, and you know, get coverage through him, save money and get better deals. So keep doing that. Keep sending the show content. Um, what we think might be interesting for everybody might not be. So if you have an idea you think would be good, please send it. Um, state associations, you know, we talk, talk about them till we're blue in the face, get involved. You know, normally I, I would have to say it's almost like this in every state, but I know my state, your state, you've got a handful of people doing a, a shit ton of work to make things happen. Legislative changes, trainings, all kinds of stuff. So get involved. If you don't have the time, then, you know, at least send the money. It, it, it helps tremendously. And state associations are how we get things done. You know, federal legislation doesn't happen in our favor too often. It usually comes as a result of multiple states doing certain things and, and making good changes and federal law follow, following suit. So get involved. You know, we've, we say it every show. Yeah. And, and really don't, don't just focus on your own state as far as membership and the associations. Uh, of course, uh, my company is a member of the Towing and Recovery Association of Georgia, TRAG. Um, we're also members of Sunshine State down in uh, Florida. That's got a bunch of benefits. One, they have great meetings. If you want to see how to uh, have a meeting, I, I, have, I have something I always say that uh, if you want people to come to your meetings, have meetings that people want to come to. And man, yeah. Sunshine State does a great job of that. Uh, so I kind of like to observe and come back to track and report and uh, offer suggestions on how to make our own meetings uh, better. We recently joined uh, ATRA, uh, Alabama Towing and Recovery Association. And like a week after joining, we actually joined. Hey, they're so close. Alabama's doing a lot of really good things. Their association is so proactive right now in making things happen that I wanted to make sure I was on top of everything they're doing. And uh, just by coincidence, they they have that uh, the Miller uh, Ultra Heavy Recovery class about a month month and a half ago. We joined just in time to to get a uh, receive a discount on that class for uh, our employees that we sent. And then just last week, I find out that now we're uh, we received national uh, tire discounts through ATRA. So I mean, there's a there's a lot of advantages. It's not just you're not just paying your few hundred bucks a year to get a newsletter, there's ways to make money back and, and, and to turn that membership into something that is a, a benefit to you and your company. So, so, so branch out. It also opens up. You just, you just mentioned something about legislatively things tend to happen when a couple of States kind of get on board together and do something. And that's, that's kind of our motive here. Georgia, let's get connections, start building some bridges and, uh, and get involved in some neighboring state associations. Uh, we're looking at South Carolina next. Uh, so j just to stay on top of things and know what the people next door are up to or what might be coming down the line, they may have some, some bad legislation coming their way and they, you can see that and you can see how they handle it and deal with it before it ever comes to your state. So they, there's so many reasons. So please, when it comes to your associations, state, national, whatever, uh, you know, ERSC is fantastic. Get, get involved. Uh, if, if you can, if you can do it and you feel it's going to have a benefit to you, I bet if you join neighboring States, you're going to find out there's benefits to it. You didn't even see coming. So uh, definitely branch out a little bit try to build those bridges with other state uh, towing associations also. Yeah. I mean, we can make a bigger impact faster if we're all working on similar stuff at the same time, instead of in, in response to our neighboring state, you know, come up, they come up with something good. They pass legislation because it's, it's not a quick thing to do to, to come up with a bill, to get it sponsored, to get it voted on, to get it through, to get it passed. So if we're all working on you know, similar, similar type time frames, then that's huge. Uh, you know, we're not taking 10 years to, to make a national presence on this certain type of legislation. We can, you know, hopefully get everything passed at the same time and, and move it up the ladder much quicker. Um, 
but I think the response to to bad legislation or um you know the the attack we're under right now from the insurance companies hearing about that stuff early is it, it it's so important. And that's the way that we protect our industries. We have to have seats at the table and hear these conversations and kill them early. So that that's the main – well, not the main, but that is a huge benefit um, to being involved. Yeah, and if you're not aware of it yet, please go find the survey that ATRI has out right now. I believe it's American Transportation, either American Transportation or Trucking – Research Institute, ATRI, go check out the uh, survey that they're floating around to their membership right now uh, on a national basis. It's, it's, uh, we're in for an interesting year, two years ahead of us here. Yeah. And this, this survey is definitely skewed towards collecting a certain type of data against the towing industry. So if you've not seen it, you got to go look at it because there's, a lot of us that have been saying this has been coming for years now. This is coming. This is coming. It's around the corner. And we're normally met with, that'll never happen. Ah, not in my lifetime. Well, no, it's happening. It's happening right now. And we need to be prepared for it. And we need to start uh, doing something about it now. We don't need to wait until this is all gone. Uh, you know, that the survey's done and it goes on to the, um, goes on to the, whoever they, have uh let me back that up whoever they're well connected with at uh, the federal level you uh we we don't need to sit back and just allow, allow this to happen to our industry so please go check out that that survey and at least realize what's coming down the line really soon but other than that thanks for a great 2022 and uh we will be back before you know it <laughs>